Hi. One of the questions I'm often asked is, have I ever had anyone famous in my taxi? And I've been driving a cab for a very long time and actually I've had hundreds of famous people in my cab. I haven't kept a record, I don't collect autographs and I'm not actually very good at spotting famous people. Sometimes I, somebody looks vaguely familiar and I just think, well, either they've been in EastEnders or uh, I knew them at school or something like that. But I'm never really sure. But there are some people who, you, you, um, they're unmistakable. You can't, well, a anyone would know who they are. And, uh, for example, uh, I've had three former chancellors of the Exchequer in my cab. Um, Reggie Maudlin, uh, Nigel Lawson, and uh, Norman Lamont. Uh, Norman Lamont, although I can't remember his name very well, I had him in the cab several times. And w one thing they all had in common was they're all a grumpy bunch of people. <laughs> I I had I've had uh, politicians often use cabs. I I had um, Tony Benn uh, in my cab once. He no, he was quite not quite nice to to meet. Ringo Starr, uh, a star to me. He was quite a pleasant guy. Um, but as for people that I would like to to see or, or, or people that mean something to me that generally speaking not the case I don't, don't really care who these people are there are some people that I, I do uh, respect I suppose and, and they are stars uh, in my eyes um, people like uh, Clive Clive James uh, or, or Michael Palin or uh, I don't know, Vera Lynn. Vera Lynn, is a, she was a national treasure. She was 100 years old when I picked her up. And, oh, good on her. You know, I mean, if you, just living to be 100 is, is an achievement. Oh, and, and the one person I would have liked to have had in my cab and didn't, he got in the cab in front, in fact, uh, was. Uh, everybody's hero David Attenborough I think we'd all well I, I certainly would have liked to have carried him somewhere but I don't initiate conversations with people unless they want to talk I'll leave them alone I think if, if you're famous you basically you get in a cab for a bit of peace and quiet you don't it want to be reminded of who you are and what you've done all your life. Uh, I, I, I had a cab once uh, that was white. I rented this white cab, I thought it would be a bit of a novelty. And Everyone that got in it said the same thing. It's, it's a white cab, isn't it? I said, yeah, yeah it's, it's white. And I had that same conversation over and over again and it, it's the same if you're famous everywhere you go every shop you go into people say oh you're you're so and so aren't you and you go yeah and uh, <laughs> then they say oh I, I liked you in your last film but I, I don't think much of it you know whatever it must be so boring for people all they want to do is a bit of peace and quiet. That that's generally true. A, I can think of one person who I had in my cab that definitely wasn't true of. That was Barbara Windsor. Uh, she knew who she was, and she was very happy for you to know who she was as well. And she was everything she appears to be. She was happy and funny and. Uh, friendly and uh, nice really she sparkled she was covered in glittery things jewelry and, and uh, shiny stuff 
and uh, yeah, she was she was nice. I know it. I know it was all an act. I'm sure that the real Barbara Windsor is under there somewhere. But I, it was a good act, and I enjoyed it. And I was pleased to to take her where where she was going. Oh yeah, are there any people that you really don't want in your cab? Well, uh, generally speaking, drunk people. Uh, drunk people are nothing but trouble. They puke in the back of your cab. They argue when they get where they're going. They don't want to pay you the fare, or they haven't got the money. Nothing but trouble. Uh, I remember one on one occasion I was driving through uh, um, Vauxhall, and uh, this person hailed me from the side. He said, oi, oi, hurry! But I looked over there, and there was this man standing next to another man who had slumped forward over the front garden wall of, of the house and uh, all you could see was his bare buttocks <laughs> which is uppermost in, in the uh, and I I thought well no I don't think so I won't do that I went I just drove off uh, another occasion I've made the mistake well I made a mistake of picking up this guy who was leaning on a lamppost somewhere in the city and he wanted to go to Kilburn and I thought oh, okay I took him to Kilburn halfway there there was this god awful smell and he had soiled himself on the back seat of my taxi <laughs> I may, I, you know, when we got there, he tried to deny it. I mean, really, it wasn't, it wasn't possible to uh, deny it. But he tried. Uh, but I, I made him get a bowl of water and, you know, wash it out a bit. But he couldn't get rid of the smell. It needed a, a thorough, deep clean. It ruined my night's work. I had to go home. And uh, the lesson I learned from that is that if you see somebody leaning on a lamppost, don't just stop right by them. Stop like 20 or 30 yards up the road. And if they can walk to you without staggering, <laughs> you, you, you've got a fighting chance. But on the other hand, if they're plainly drunk, just drive off. And... Uh, <laughs> But I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not completely heartless. I know these people want to get home. Uh, many times I've taken the people that have had a bit too much to drink home and, uh, yeah, uh, they're perfectly all right. Uh, on one occasion, I uh, I was hailed by a young man in somewhere like the Elephant Castle. And he said, oh, can you help me, mate? Can you help me, please? So, uh, and... He wanted me to help him with this large, drunken man that he was with. And uh, my initial uh, reaction was to stop, say, no, I'm sorry, mate, I'm not interested in that, I can't do that. Anyway, he said, oh, please, it's my, my dad, I can't leave him. Uh, uh, you know... My heart went out to him. I, I was moved, really. I, I thought I, I could help this guy. So I uh, helped him bundle his dad, his drunken, useless dad, into the back of the cab and took him to Roehampton or somewhere where I, I didn't want to be. I didn't want to go, and it wasn't really worth my while, but I, I just couldn't leave him. I, I just felt sorry for him, I suppose. That reminds me. Uh, another question that people often ask me is, have you ever been offered sex in the back of your cab? Or have you ever been propositioned by a customer? And uh, the answer would be yes. Uh, a number of times, both men and women have 
offer themselves sometimes in lieu of payment and sometimes just out of I don't know what what they hope to achieve by it but um I don't I I not very often not very often I I'm not really giving out the right sort of vibes I think for that I, I know there are some cab drivers and, and some men in general who take up every every opportunity they get to have sex but doesn't really appeal to me I, I I prefer to get to know somebody before I really get intimate with them and uh, <laughs> the thought of having sex with somebody in the back of a cab you've just met who probably had too much to drink is not really very appealing I suppose it, I can see how it happens uh, that the person they go out in search of human contact and they don't have a very successful evening they probably have a bit too much much to drink and then the cab driver is their last chance but I suppose, I, I suppose if I was desperate 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 uh, I'd do the same thing I, I'm just not that desperate <laughs> Anyway, uh, that that reminds me of a story once uh, on the way home to Chelsea with somebody. He said, uh, "Oh, he said uh, marriage is a two-legged stool. Two-legged stool can't stand. It needs a third leg." I th I, I sort of I I wasn't sure what he was talking about, but I thought he was going to take me home and offer me as a third leg to his marital stool but uh, no fortunately and and to my relief it turns out that god is the third <laughs> the third leg of your stool uh, anyway I, I drove a cab for over 40 years so there are many more, more stories like this and uh, i should be telling you a few of them later on but for now that's all I've got so I'll see you later